That is the question. We, we, we don't know that, but let's bring in a member of both the Foreign Relations and the Judiciary Committees, Democratic Senator Chris Coons of Delaware. Senator, uh, did you were able to hear that uh, interview Keir Simmons had with uh, Sergey Lavrov, correct? Did you hear that? Yes, I did, John. Did, did, did you get the impression, uh, well, let me ask you, is it wrong to get the impression listening to Lavrov and thinking of Putin and Lavrov and Trump in the same room <coughs> that we're looking at a huge, huge mismatch here and that we're paying a price yes, for it? Yes, I mean, I think it's important for us to remember that uh, Vladimir Putin and Sergei Lavrov are very experienced, very cagey players on the world stage. Um, this is the fourth American president with which uh, they've had the opportunity to work. And Vladimir Putin, uh, a skilled former KGB agent, has all the tools at his disposal uh, that Russia has used to play chess with us uh, over decades. And my concern is that President Trump is playing checkers uh, or isn't even on the same board. So uh, w with regard, again, with the Russians, uh, what are your thoughts on the combination of Russia and Tehran now that we've supposedly just given up the ghost in Syria? Russia and Tehran dominating that, that area, that region of the world. Well, that's got significant strategic consequences for us and our close allies. Uh, Michael Gerson wrote, uh, I thought, a compelling column in the Post yesterday entitled uh, Trump's breathtaking surrender to Russia uh, that points out some of the consequences uh, of the unilaterally uh, walking away uh, from the Syrian opposition that's been trained and equipped by the CIA over recent years. Um, and the idea that uh, we would make a number of concessions to Russia without getting anything in return and how that weakness will affect our role in the Middle East, uh, in Western Europe and throughout the world. Uh, as Richard Haas just pointed out, uh, we've got significant challenges around the world. Uh, we're not talking about North Korea. We're not talking about finding ways to um, move China towards reining in North Korea's nuclear program. Uh, we're instead talking about how we are on uh, the retreat in the face of Russian assertion uh, or aggressiveness, whether it's on the eastern edge of NATO uh, or in the Middle East in Syria. And to your question, uh, I think Iran is poised to take advantage of the opening uh, that's being created here and to spread um, their brand of extremism even more broadly throughout the Middle East. Senator, you also sit on the uh, Judiciary Committee and you've invited uh, Donald Trump Jr. and Paul Manafort to testify on Wednesday. I wonder, one, if you think they'll show up and two, if you'll subpoena them if they do not. Well, both uh, the chair of the committee, uh, Senator Grassley, and the ranking member, Senator Feinstein, have publicly said that they will use the Senate subpoena power uh, if they don't come uh, willingly. So I expect that we will see them next Wednesday. Uh, I think this is an important next step in better understanding of what happened. Uh, I'll remind you uh, that the meeting that they had, that Donald Trump Jr. had and Jared Kushner and Paul Manafort, was supposedly about uh, adoptions, something that President Trump just referenced as well. Oh, I talked about adoptions. The adoptions issue is really tied to the Magnitsky Act, which is a set of sanctions on Russian human rights abusers, uh, folks who were involved in murdering Sergei Magnitsky uh, back in 2009. This is something Senator Ben Cardin and Senator John McCain have really championed as part of our long history of standing up to Russian abuses of human rights. All right, Senator Chris Coons, thank you so much for spending some time with us. Still ahead on Morning Joe. Did Russia intervene in our election? Of course, and the one before.